All right, everyone. <clears throat> so let me go over why I think the economy will continue to get worse in America. And if it gets worse in America, then I would imagine it's going to continue to get worse in other parts of the world because America is a consumer or consuming country, right? So here it says, poor Americans will see their pandemic savings run out this year. Okay. And so if you look here, it says the access savings that Americans built up during the first couple of years of the pandemic are due to, exa to be exhausted at some point. But when? In 2022, economists spent, expected the extra savings stock to be much more resilient than it actually was. It dropped from 2.3 tr trillion to 1.2 trillion over the course of a year. So, you know, yeah, if you had whatever, thirty, forty thousand dollars now you only have you have less than half. Basically well, around half. So a little more than half. But imagine for thirty thousand dollars you have fifteen thousand. Forty thousand dollars you have twenty thousand. Okay. And this happened in a year. Well what do you think is gonna happen this year? Right? And here You look at this, all right, despite Fortune recommends, 57% uh, of Americans can't afford a $1,000 emergency expense, says New Report. A look at why Americans are saving less and how you can boost your emergency fund. I didn't read the whole thing. I'm just, you know. But let's look at this right here, okay? When unexpected expenses crop up, having a safety net to catch you when you fall can help minimize the financial fallout. But in a struggling economy, Americans' emergency savings are taking a hit. Right? Emergency savings are taking a hit. Well, yeah. You just spent half of, you know, the country just spent half of its savings in a year. Okay? Um, according to Bankrate's annual emergency fund report, 68% of Americans are worried they wouldn't be able to cover their living expenses for just one month if they lost their primary source of income. And when push comes to shove, the majority, 57% of adults, are currently unable to afford a $1,000 emergency expense. When broken down by generation, Zen Zers, 85% and millennials, 77%, are more likely to be worried about covering an emergency expense. So let's look at some reasons why. Well, inflation. Okay, so there are a few reasons Americans are putting less away in their emergency funds. The top reason cited by respondents, 74%, was inflation, raising costs have put added pressure on the average American's wallet. And while the inflation rate is beginning to cool, it still stands at 6.5% for the 12 months ending in December 2022, significantly higher than 2% than the 2% rate at, uh, at economists say is needed to keep the economy running smoothly. So think about it. Uh, food went up 10% over 10%. Energy, over 7%. Gas of all types is at a minus. New vehicles, almost 6%. Used cars and trucks went down. Okay, but before we know how high it was going. Um, apparel, shelter, shelter over 7%. Transportation services. All right. And imagine this. Imagine that inflation is still going to continue to go up in 2023, which means that with the inflation that went up from 2021 to 2022, that took away half of the savings. Well, you still have the exact amount of inflation plus another, you know, 
six to five percent throughout this year from the previous 2022 that means the 1.2 trillion will actually will be used up even sooner faster this year than last year okay so what am i saying let's say if you had a product that's a hundred dollars and you know let's say that product was a hundred six dollars fifty cents and that was last year and that made you spend half of your savings because that product went up 6.5 percent now this year is going to go up another whatever let's say five percent on top of the 6.5 percent so that a hundred six dollars fifty cent thing that you were buying is now over a hundred ten dollars it's over a hundred ten dollars over a hundred eleven dollars well and you have to keep buying that product well then you're going to use up more of your money your savings this year than last year okay so you know inflation is what's causing a lot of this but remember, 57% of Americans can't afford a $1,000 emergency, right? That means people are going to spend less money, which causes what? This. 40% can't pay rent, okay? Here, and these aren't old articles. This is like January 3rd. 52% of small restaurant owners were delinquent. 52% of small restaurant owners couldn't pay rent. That's up 10%. Okay, because this is January, which means they're showing numbers in December. And in December, that was up 10% from November. Let's look at this. This is December 29. 2022 40% can't pay rent they're not talking about 40% of restaurants they're talking about 40% of small business owners 40% of small business owners in the US can't could not afford to pay their full rent on time in December 52% couldn't pay the rent their full rent on time for small restaurants so you do the math okay you really think you really think the economy is, is gonna get better no it's gonna get worse because you see that companies are, are laying off more and more employees and these aren't like like you know service companies these are big companies rather it's Tesla Amazon you name it, they're just, you know, Facebook, um, Google, you name it, they are letting employees go, which means you're going to have less people spending money because they don't, you, it's hard to replace those type of jobs. It's another thing if you just quit one restaurant to work at another restaurant. And this is also why I think the housing market is going to take a, a pretty big hit. Um, because you got to think a lot of these small store owners, they some of them own homes. They can't afford to pay rent. They can't afford to pay the mortgages. And if they have fluctuating mortgages, it's even harder to pay that because the interest on that went up has doubled. And so the house is the last thing you want to sell but now you're going to have people selling their homes while interest rates went up for mortgage which means they have to sell their homes at a much lower price than before just to reach buyers that can afford a house um and it's going to be bad it's going to be really bad and so that's what I see, you know. Uh, that's just in 2023, right? That's why I keep saying, yeah, I expect things to get worse before they get better. 
And then now, if you look at even Korea, all right, and this is more in mid time, you're talking about like five, 10 years. Uh, here you have the US Federal Reserve, right, compared to the BOK, this is the Bank of Korea. US Federal Reserve is up 4.75%, 4.5%, 4.75. The BOK Bank of Korea is only at 3.5%, but yet the dollar has gone weak to the Korean won, right? Why is that? And you have this, right? Now you have Saudi Arabia moves to open oil trading to currencies other than the US dollar, which is going to destroy the petrol dollar. Okay. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, but anyway, you do the math. That if other currencies had to buy dollars to buy oil, and now you no longer have to buy dollars, well, the demand of the dollars will go down. And that's why even though the U.S. Federal Reserve has higher interest rates compared to other countries like the euro or, or or like Europe or Korea or Japan, yet the U.S. dollar is weakening is because, well, the demand for the dollar is weakening. And normally America, if you're like a smaller country like Iraq, Libya, Syria, yeah, America go, can go in there and change a regime. Um, you know, go to war, but it's a lot different when it's like China or China and Russia, whatnot. And so that's right here. You have a, a an Air Force general who, you know, he predicts a war between China in 2025. Uh, I hope this never happens. I hope, it ne I would hate to see a war between America and China. Um, but... This is coming from a four-star general, okay? And normally, historically, when you have an old power like the United States, and then you have a new power rising like China, historically, you can say there's a war because the old power doesn't want to lose the number one seat. Um, and so... You know, it doesn't look good even in the next 10 years because, um, you know, you have the BRICS nations and they're all working their way where they don't have to use the U.S. dollar, right? You're not dependent on the U.S. dollar because the U.S. dollar has been weaponized. And, you know, you see that the petrodollar is in the first beginning steps of maybe fading away. Um, and even just within this year, you can see the economy is not looking good. It's not looking good. So as of this year is why I say things right now, hopefully maybe towards the end of the year or, you know, towards the end of third quarter, fourth quarter, maybe things will look better. But as of now in February, and I've been saying, I've been saying this for years, Things continue to look worse for America. Things will get worse before they get better. And with this and this, you know, maybe the U.S. dollar, you know, the world reserve currency status will be gone um, in 10 years. Or, you know, the, the British sterling was the reserve currency at one time, but you see the British sterling is still exists, right? So obviously US dollar, I would imagine, will exist. But it, I would imagine it will lose some of its prominent role as the reserve currency, or maybe more than what is expected. I don't know. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, as of right now, things don't look good in the States, um, which means it's not going to look good for the world. So, 
yeah now I give you all some reasons why I think that um, and of course I hope I'm wrong I hope I'm Anyway, as always, uh, I'm praying for all of you in Jesus' name. I hope that, you know, when you can work, if you have a job, work, work hard. Uh, if you have a business, work your business really hard, you know. And surround yourself with the right people. Uh, be spiritually healthy, mentally healthy, physically healthy, you know. And, and, yeah, it's better to prepare, you know, work hard, save money, you know, prepare for for more economic hardships as people will be able to, you know, they're going to, they can't spend as much money. Yeah, you might say, well, you might hear stuff on the news where they say that people, consumers have spent more money, but they're forced to spend more money because of inflation. It doesn't actually mean that they're buying more things or just spending more money to get less things. And so that's a difference, you know. Uh, but it, it looks like it's not going to, this year, at least for now, it doesn't look so good. All right, everyone. God bless all of you in Jesus' name.